So we are here. I'm still at my mum's house, as you can see. And I'm just before we start with rice, I want everyone to keep a lookout because there were so many fairies in this room with me. Medina pointed it One out. Just went by. One went just it just Did went it? by you. Yes, right when you said that. <laughs> Honestly, it's unbelievable. So we are here, New Year's Eve. Um, it's late afternoon in the UK, New Year's Eve. It's sort of, what, midday for you, Bryce? 11.38 a.m. for us on the coast. So we really wanted, I was so keen to do a, a show with Bryce today because my bestie, you know, we've had such fun. We've been on such a journey this year, haven't we? And <sighs> Moving forward into looking forward into 2022, people have got such hopes and we've all got such hopes coming. I just couldn't think of anyone I'd rather have the chat with today. So how are you doing? I'm good. I'm excited for 2022. I mean, we, we've said this like every month. We're like, this is it, guys. This is it, guys. But I think it is. I think really it is because as we were talking about with Medina, um, we know that all everything we see playing out in the matrix is really going towards the spiritual, but here coming up in 2022 here in America, we have the midterms coming up and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So we're going to start to I really see some dominoes fall. I, I think, I hope um, pretty soon here, because if, um, if all eyes are on America, if that's kind of what we were told with the last administration in certain ways, then we need to watch those midterms and see what kind of come is starts to unfold. You know, and I think they have to do it that way because we don't want to traumatize those that are not fully aware yet, because that could be pretty traumatic to realize. I mean, it is traumatic to realize everything you've been told in your life is a lie, you know. Completely. And isn't it weird, Bryce, because, you know, when when we all started doing our channels and everything and talking about it was all to do with we were on YouTube, so we'd be careful with our words with Mr. T and what happened in that big competition and everything. And it, it was really weird because people started talking about, oh, well, it'll be 2022. Let's wait for 2022. And everyone's like, don't be ridiculous. It'll be well over that. And now we're nearly in 2022. And here we all are. But just before we sort of get into some of our hopes and aspirations for 2022, I just wanted to draw people's attention because you did a brilliant show that you've put up today with Shanti and Morney from Aqu Aquarius Rising Africa all about the real meaning of new year haven't you yes well you know me i'm a nerd i really i really like studying i get but i only like studying topics i find interesting and the funny thing is i was telling Morne and, and uh shanti that i figure i found the new year's stuff last year our 2021 easter i was doing a deep dive into the true history of easter for david zublik for the dark outpost and i stumbled upon this idea that the Easter celebration, which is we hold Easter the first Sunday after the full moon, after the vernal equinox. And here in the Northern Hemisphere, the vernal equinox is the spring equinox. It's it's yeah. the springtime. And of course, you can, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, so I would suggest anybody who wants to research this themselves, look back at the old text of the books of Exodus and Deuteronomy from the Bible, where it talks about when the new cycle of the new year should start and it's around the vernal equinox which makes sense to me because in in the northern hemisphere that's the rebirth that's the rebirth yes. of spring so if we're looking at getting in rhythm with nature then that kind of seems like a no-brainer that that would be the celebration of the new year so the vernal equinox is anywhere between march 19th and march 21st um and so that whole it, that that just makes sense i was like well that Okay, common sense, that's logical. And so when I was studying this, I was like, well, damn, if that's actually our new year, then why do we celebrate the new year on January 1? Because yeah. in the Northern Hemisphere, now here in Atlanta, it's like 70, it's actually 70 and raining outside, which makes it really gross because it's humid too. So it's gross out here right now in Georgia. But if you think about most of the Northern Hemisphere, it's really cold where you are, right? We're like, you're like in the dead of winter. Yeah, nothing's regrowing. So why are we celebrating a new start, a new cycle when everything's like leaves are off the tree? There's nothing. There's no rebirth. Nothing's coming up, coming around in nature. Well, it comes down to the Saturnalian festival, which is what we talked about 
with uh, Shanti, Cindy, and Mornay for our Christmas show. But of course, the 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days of Saturn, and January 1 falls right in those 12 days, ending on uh, January 7th. Well, this has to do with the god, the Roman god Janus, which is where we get the month January from. Uh, makes sense. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because we know that our time has been totally messed with. Like, we don't know what date it really is. I think most of us kind of accept that. Like, who knows? But if you look at like December, November, October, you see 10, 9, 8, September 7th, August 8th. So you see these numbers of months, but we have 12 months. Well, 12 also then goes back to Saturnalian. So they added months into our into our calendar, January being one of them. So Janus, J-A-N-U-S, he was like one of the original gods in the pantheon of gods from the Roman um, Empire. And he was the god of transitions. So any type of transition, uh, birth, death, aging, marriage, education, harvest. So we know Saturn was also involved with that. He was also the doorkeeper. So because he was the god of transitions, gatekeepers, this is where we get the word janitor from, because the janitor is the guy that walks around with all the keys. Uh, Janice also has a key in his right hand that looks just like the keys the, Freem the Freemasons use. So that's interesting. He has two heads, uh, one facing forward, one facing back, depicting the, the future and the past. Um, and he's also the god of maritime law. Mm. Ding, ding, ding. Super interesting. I don't know how much we can say on that, but for those who've been on this journey for a while, you know, that's significant. And those who have not been on this journey for a while, just look up birth certificates. Yes, so <laughs> maritime law is a big one. Yeah. It's not the law of the land, my friends, not the law of the land. And he also brought in financial enterprise. So he was the one, the first ever coins that you have from the Roman empire had Janice's head on it. And of course we know that the financial enterprise and maritime law are very much connected he also mm -hmm. brought in uh the worship of saturn the saturnalian um there were a lot of rituals done in homage to janice which i think you guys know what we're talking about when we say rituals if you be very, very careful about how we say that and um they would always put magistrates into the senate into the 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 places of, of political power on January 1, in homage to Janice. Now, in the United States, we have our inauguration in January. But originally, our original inaugurations were on, like, March 4th. So that got moved. Changed. When did they get moved? I, If I had to guess, I'd have to look into that. But if I had to guess, I would say around the act of 1871 is when it probably yeah. got changed. Because that's when we got sold out to uh, the banking institution in america so i would if i had to guess that that's when they moved it um to to january the late 21st 20th something like that is when we but it has all it has every we know that this bunch of people everything needs something they're not just picking like a, a and, and january is not especially in washington dc like that's not a pretty time of year it makes more sense to have something where people can be outside and be comfortable and it's pretty but it's you know, DC is up there. It's north. It's snowy. It's not. It's not right. like this great time of year to be having like a bunch of people fly in, you know, to see this event. So it would make more sense to do it in the spring when it was when it was the weather was more accommodating, especially back in the time when they didn't have the electricity, the electricity, the heating lamps, all that stuff that we have now. So, um, so it all has to do with this Saturnalian Janus celebration. They would do. They would make pledges. And resolutions, the people to the god Janus, we do that. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> I haven't made a resolution in a very long time. But Most we do that. people do, though, don't they? Most yeah. people, you know, their New Year's resolutions are quite a big thing for them. So now how often they like, <laughs> they don't, often don't last very long. But <laughs> they ask like a month. <laughs> yeah, exactly, if you're lucky. Normally, it falls going to the gym and getting fit, doesn't it? And drinking yeah. and eating less. So. Yeah, um, wow. it's it amazing, keep, isn't it? When you look into all this, it is quite incredible when you start looking into really the meaning behind all of it. Now, the scary thing is like, you know, and I, we kind of said this in the Saturnalian Festival. I'm not one that's like super agitated about these old celebrations that our ancestors did it all. You know, I, we, we know that the that the light, if you look at even scientifically, which is more Catherine's area with light and darkness, darkness can't create only light can you think about like photosynthesis. So if we look at that from a spiritual perspective, people of the light um, who have that spark of divinity 
can create. So everything we have in our world was originally created by the white. I mean, even the pyramids. I mean, I keep this, this is not, this shape of pyramid is not bad. It was I've got one literally identical to that in my oh, house. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm absolutely identical to that. How funny. Soul Sisters. I love um, orange. I absolutely love orange. I yeah. think it's that. Well, we can talk about that too because of the whole orange man thing about the glowing. Yeah. That's interesting as well. But um, so everything we have was created by, by God, by the light, by source. And the, the only thing the darkness can do is take it and invert it. And so that's why a lot of these old festivals... Most of the citizens of the Roman Empire were probably very innocently celebrating these festivals. Um, it wasn't, it was probably the elite that were the ones that were involved in the, the real nefarious rituals. And we know, like we said with our Saturnalian uh, episode, anything having to do with a square, like your town square, Times Square, which is big for New Year's, has to do with the square, uh, the black square of Saturn. And mm. so I, Taught, we talked about this morning with Mornay and Shanti. We know that we now know that a lot of these big world events that happen, these celebrations, sporting events, we now know that they use these to harness the energy of the crowd. And typically underneath, there's something nefarious happening. Now, I'm not saying that's happening with every sporting event. So you don't have to, I don't think you need to worry about that at your child's like peewee soccer game. I don't think, I think it's very specific. So we don't, don't want to go to an extreme with all of them. But if we look at the biggest celebration in America for the new year is the ball dropping in Times Square. And even as a kid, now I would never want to be at Times Square at New Year's. That just makes me like, hideous hideous oh my god anxiety through through the roof but we would watch it as kids we get to stay up late and we get to watch the ball drop mm. well times square the square is the square of saturn they're harnessing that energy and i guarantee you guarantee you there's probably something underneath where they're doing rituals still to this inverted version of satan of the dark giving that you know what they do, what you guys know what they do. So yeah. it's interesting though, I was saying with Mornay and Shanti, uh, when the world started to end in 2020, when things, you know, everywhere, uh, Times Square has not had the same uh, celebrations it normally does because of that. And I'm wondering, you know, they say what God uses for bad, or excuse me, what the devil uses for bad, God will use for good. So I'm wondering if that was a, a, an opportunity for, for them to kind of halt that at Times Square, halt what was happening underneath um, underneath Times Square. So again, if you if you guys know what we're talking about, if you don't know what, what we're talking about, you'll find out eventually. So it's pretty yeah, horrific, and hopefully, hopefully not too long. I mean, it's yeah, it's uh, and let's hope. I think this has been one of the things, you know, the great changes in terms of. I nearly said the great reset, <laughs> so, um, but you know, in terms of the great. Um, it has it, oh, another it, fairy it, by Catherine. You another, one, another I know another one. Yeah. literally everywhere in here. And I wonder sometimes, you know, when when the dogs suddenly start barking and you're thinking, what are they barking about? Well, I now know what they're barking about. And isn't it amazing how you can see things on camera yeah, that you, you can't, can't see. see with your naked eye? It's just absolutely fascinating. But there's a lot of them around here. They really are. It's a beautiful area where my mum's in and everything, and it's just surrounded by wildlife, um, similar to where I am. But, um, yeah, it's really lovely. It's like a typical little little gingerbread cottage in the woods sort of thing. So with foxes everywhere and wildlife and because everything. Very, so, <laughs> they obviously really love fun. you so because they're, they're around you. So it's everywhere. They really are. I'm hoping one will come and land on my shoulder in a minute. Come on, fairy. Um, <laughs> Ah, so moving into 2022, um, one of the things that you and I have spoken about a lot recently is about really putting our energy into what we do want and what we do want to not only create in the future, but be experiencing right here, right now. And that's really, really important, isn't it, in terms of sort of getting that balance right between um being here right here right now what can we make the most of now mm -hmm. and then how when you bring that joy into the things that's going to affect what we're manifesting and creating sort of moving forward yeah absolutely you know it's funny i i i know i've been very honest um on my channel, other people's channel, that I, I struggle with anxiety. That's something that I really struggle with. I was diagnosed with CPTSD 
a while ago, that's complex post-traumatic stress disorder and knowledge is power. So now that I know what it is, it's, it's easier to control the anxiety and control the catastrophe thinking. But one thing that I want to, and this is something I've worked on in my, my yoga practice off and on, but with the stress of everything that's happened these last couple of years, and especially stuff this last month that's happened, I've kind of find myself falling back in this place of, of being really anxiety ridden. And I was talking with Taylor and Stephanie about, and we've talked about the whole zero point again and bringing yourself yeah. back to this moment of now. And that's something that I want to step forward, do more is really practice bringing myself into the now and stop worrying about things that are actually totally out of my control. And I know in the yoga sutras, uh, it talks a lot about that, about when, when you have anxiety, when you have fears, when things are coming up, you know, the whole point of, of a spiritual walk in a lot of ways is being able to surrender yourself to, to God, to the universe, whatever you want to call that omnipresent uh, source creation and being able to just totally surrender to the way that that energy is going to push you and flow you through life. And when we have those anxieties and those fears pop up, that's showing that, that we're not trusting, you know, and that's not saying you're a bad person. It's, it's what did I, I sent you this the other day, Catherine, the me that it was like, God created your, your mission and he even took in your stupidity or something like he knew yes. you were stupid. <laughs> So it's not like God's mad at you because you're like stressing out, you know, he, he knows you're human. Our source knows that you're, you're a human being. But, um, but I've, I've noticed in my life, the time, the time that I've really practiced trying to just be where I am in that moment, it's caused, it's brought me a lot of peace. And that's something that I do want to continue to work on going forward again is because we, we've learned, I mean, th those of us in this community, I mean, this is one big yoga practice. We don't have control. Like we, we don't, we can stand up for ourselves. We can have our sovereignty, but as far as like the, the plug being pulled, I mean, I know I get yelled at sometimes. I'm sure you do too, too, Catherine, by people watching because nothing, nothing's happened yet. And it's like, I don't, I'm, I'm just a YouTuber. Like I don't have that power. And so to be able to kind of surrender to, to the, um, the flow of the universe. Again, that's not saying you don't stand up for what's right. You absolutely do stand up for what's right. What's right. You don't consent. You take your sovereignty back, but you also allow, allow for the universe to, to do what it needs to do by being in the moment, being in the now and not worrying so much about what's going to happen next month or the month after that, it, that, if that makes sense. Yeah, completely. And it's so interesting when people say, oh, nothing's happened yet. And I've, I've said it on numerous occasions. And then you catch yourself and you're thinking something is happening every second of every minute of every day. What we really mean is what we wanted to have happened hasn't publicly been declared yet. And there, th there's power of, you know, what we're putting out there constantly just by saying that. And even this, this week, I haven't listened to much this week at all, but the stuff I have listened to, there's this consistent theme about more lockdowns are coming or oh, don't worry if it is it's the white hats and if it's this and if it's that and I'm just like oh my goodness it's just constantly yes pre-warned you know if you if you've got a good awareness then you can make better decisions so you can do certain prep you can prepare yourself mentally those are all really positive things to do but equally it's so important not to put your focus on all these things too much as well, because if everyone's focusing on the fact that another lockdown's coming and this time supposedly it's White Hat, for example, just as one example of what's been doing the rounds again recently, then that's what we're going to be focusing on and that's what we're all going to get. Um, so it's a really constant work in progress, isn't it? To sort of sit there and really think, OK, what is actually happening in my life right now? What am I seeing right now? What decisions are sort of um, is it are affecting me and my daily choices? And very importantly, this leads on to one of the new series that we can talk about that you and I are going to do. What am I doing to enjoy life right now? What am I following my passions? Am I choosing to do things that bring me joy? Or am I choosing to keep myself ca caught in old behavior patterns that haven't been serving me very well? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like, um, you know, you, you think of all these sayings, like a body in motion stays in motion or misery loves company. And what you are, this like a snowball, although I've never built a big snowball, maybe one day I'll be able to do that. But you know, I assuming you push the snow and it gets bigger. And, you know, so it's like when you're stuck in that negative thought pattern, sometimes it's, it's hard 
to break free of it because it builds on itself. I mean, that's why we have reality TV. That's why everything's so dramatic. That's why the movies are so dramatic. It's because that, that stress, that anxiety, that adrenaline that feeds on it and it feeds on itself. And, and it, 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 it here's the funny thing too. And I will see sometimes what you hear and what actually happens are very, very different. And I'll give you guys an example. I am in, um, obviously, the state of Georgia. Georgia, as a state, is a very, very conservative state. It's usually a red state. This is one of the states that got um, this past competition, but that's a story from the other day. But most of the people in Georgia are very, like, if you go outside of Atlanta, Atlanta is pretty liberal. But if you go outside of Atlanta, people are living their lives, right? Mm. You don't see you know, no one's, it, people are just living their lives. They're over it. Basically a few months ago, I was down in Gulf Shores, which is the South of Alabama near New Orleans. And it was like this, um, beer thing that's flo- didn't even, you guys did, didn't even exist. It was like, you forgot that it was even a thing because people were just over it now in Atlanta. So we have, um, in the States, you know, we have a governor of each state and he kind of is the president of the state and then every city in town will have a mayor. Well, about a year ish ago, the mayor here in Atlanta uh, put a mandate out for this, but the governor had already said that those mandates weren't going to happen in Georgia. And then he filed a lawsuit against the mayor in Atlanta because she can't go above him. His, wow. his word is, is, is he's the governor. And so if he says there's none of this in that's ma- mandated in Georgia, it means all of Georgia. Mm-hmm. And so that was a big thing. Well, a couple of uh, weeks ago, the mayor once again said, this was going to be mandated. And um, the funny thing is, is I don't even actually think she's around anymore, but it all came out in the news, but yet nobody in Atlanta is like, I went to the grocery store yesterday and like, no one had, everyone's like, whatever, you know? So you kind of, you know, when we hear these things in the news, it can, it can kind of sound a little scary, but if you just step back for a minute and look at people around you, that's going to give you a better barometer because when, when she said that, and then I went to the grocery store and no one had that on. I was like, oh yeah, people are over this. They're over it. You know, because Atlanta is the, the liberal city of Georgia. So if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen here. And it has been so interesting. And one of the things that I found so fascinating over the last sort of year or so is why we're getting these change differences in behavior in different areas. So for example, where I am, everyone's doing this. You know, I would say sort of at least 80% of people that you interact with um you're not my friends and things not the people like us who we speak to but you know if you go out shopping or something it's virtually everyone having said that if you walk around without one you don't get any hassle at all don't you know don't get any hassle so it just shows again these actions just show how much we talked about the other day about how much people put themselves into their own boxes their own cages their own restrictions etc because you know if 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 I and other people can walk around and completely ignore it, so could others if they so choose to. Now, they're obviously not choosing to. They're obviously making that choice for themselves. Um, but a lot of them don't think they're making the choice for themselves. A lot of them think that they're having that choice made for them. And this is what I find so fascinating to see. And I think one of the things that I want to have a little bit of a chat about today because I think it's so relevant to what people are seeing in different pockets of behaviour all over the globe is are people en masse addicted to drama? Oh, absolutely. Addicted to having something to moan about, to complain about, to sort of, wow, look at this incredible thing that's happening in my life. And unfortunately, a lot of the drama that people are addicted to isn't good. <laughs> it's no. not exciting it's, stuff. It, no, I absolutely, I think there, and I, I know we've all had friends that just always want to know, you know, what they say, what the kids say, the tea. They always want to know, you know, what's going on, what's... um. I absolutely think that we've got, and, and, and I hope this doesn't get us in trouble with me saying this, but I saw the funniest thing. I think it was on Facebook where somebody said, if you're worried about your pronouns, then you really come from a very privileged society. You yes. Know, for a lot of us in these like Western worlds, we, we don't have, we, we, we have to create this, this, um, this illusion that we're suffering. And, and um, 
I don't know. It's it's a it's a huge it's interesting. I'm sure the uh, uh, off worlders like studying us because it is a very interesting. I, I have a feeling we're probably a reality show for the off worlders. This is oh, like good. <laughs> you know, like who's gonna throw the drink in someone's face this season? You know. So, but yes, I think that um, I think that we do. You know, and I don't notice that with children though. Like small children, they don't. You know, they play well together. It doesn't seem like they they like the drama. It's something about our adults. And I don't know if it is that adrenaline that people get that adrenaline in their system when there is something dramatic and traumatic they can talk about. And, and maybe we just need a course correct because that you can get that, that exciting adrenaline by doing other things too, that, that aren't negative or that don't negatively impact other people. And that's yeah. always kind of been my philosophy with, with life. It's like, I don't care what you do in your house. You can do whatever you want to do in your house. As long as you're not hurting anybody, like you do you. I don't care if who your God is. I don't care what you feel like makes you happy. As long as you're not hurting anybody else, then whatever. But the thing that's happening now with the people who are very much this is they're projecting that, that, that drama um, out on everybody else. And it, it starts to become this domino effect where then people feel like they really have to fight back and you don't have to fight back aggressively. You can just simply say, I don't consent. Have a nice day. Walk away. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if that makes sense, but absolutely. I think people are 100% addicted. That's why we have, um, those rag magazines, gossip magazines on, on the newspaper, right? At the, when you check out at the grocery store, they're all there. The drama that's happening with the celebrities, you know, that we all have that one friend that always likes knows the gossip of everybody. My favorite is down here in the South because it is the Bible Belt. You know, church is a very, very social thing. And growing up, you know, the church ladies, you go to church and they'd all stand outside the church after the service was over and they'd be gossiping, gossiping yeah. about someone. But they would make it okay by saying we should pray for her. We yes, should, exactly. You know? It's so funny. That is absolutely the perfect example. It's like, say all the gossip and everything, and then you can say, oh, pray for her or heal her or sending loving thoughts or sending angels, and suddenly that makes your behavior okay. And it your really virtue does. signaling. <laughs> it's absolutely hysterical. But you fit on a really important point then. I think you, you and Tamara were covering this a little bit in your talk this week as well about um you know about how much of this behavior is related to sort of unresolved childhood wounds which i i don't like looking backwards quite frankly i'm not one of these people um you know again what everyone each to their own i'm not saying this applies to anyone else but for me i much prefer to sort of look forward rather than look backwards because i can't see the point of mulling over things in the past really and I'm very much more out of Joe Dispenser's um, way of thinking in terms of, well, if you choose to make a decision to change your life, you can do it like that. You don't yeah. need you. Um, but other people are very different. But I do think what you were talking about with Tamara and the unresolved childhood wounds is very relevant to this addicted drama because you don't see young children. Yes, children might have tantrums. Yes, they might have fights but they drop it and recover really quickly. They don't hold grudges. You don't see a young child holding a grudge, do you? As soon no. as it's over, it's over again, like animals, etc. But as we go into adulthood, you know, it's like, oh, if you look at most of what's on TV and even reality, people don't want to see the ones where people are being nice to each other. Right. They want to see the ones where everything's going horribly wrong and someone's cheating on someone else and someone else has got a really bad facelift. And, you know, it's just all real drama. It's never something nice is it it's never an exciting celebration of something good happens what people want to watch is where things go horribly wrong i and think i would that, rather have a very bad face uh, no i think i'd rather be cheated on than have a really bad facelift so exactly exactly <laughs> how one could have that anyway i just i oh I'd, I'd rather just be really ugly quite frankly um but it's no way i'd let awesome. someone come to me um but it's it's really fascinating isn't it it's in terms of and, and I haven't got an answer for this. Like Bryce and I always say, we do not have the answers. We're just having a conversation between friends. But it's even about when you look at what we've all learned over the last few years about what's been happening for God knows how many years to the little people, to animals, to um, all these awful things that have happened. It's like 
this this fine line between oh my god i need to know this has been going on so that i'm not got full sidel so i'm not making decisions that are supporting some of this behavior buying from companies that are funding these things going on etc so you have got to do some stuff but also i'm seeing so many people that haven't been victims to that themselves sort of caught in their own grief and how it's sort yeah. of affecting them and yes, it does affect you when you know these atrocities, but it's not helping anyone by wallowing in it. Yeah. You know, it's interesting as you were talking about the whole drama and it, I think it, kind of, it might even go back to when you rig- figure out what's been happening in these certain ritual. Mm. Um, it kind of goes back to something you, me and Medina were talking about. And that's that level. I think, you know, it's so funny because a lot of our art, if we, if we look through it, the history of like all of humanity's art, if you look at like all of, of um, Shakespeare's writing, uh, all of whoever Shakespeare was, you know, all John Donne, like all these poems, it's all dealing, the reason why we're still studying this stuff and we're still affected by it is because it's all dealing with the human condition. And regardless yeah. of what timeline you're living in, you're still a human being and human beings suffer. We go through suffering. And sometimes um, we were talking about with Medina, this like level of expectation that we have, you're talking about your daughter being 20 and having to make these big decisions and having all this pressure. And so we have this like pressure to live up to certain expectations to have this, it's probably gotten worse with the invent, invent, uh, with social media and all the pictures you see because somebody's Instagram life, it's never their real life, but it gives this <laughs> picture of being perfect. And then the, but inside, we know that that's not our true life. And so I think we, it's almost like that misery loves company. We get addicted to this drama because then it, it I think it makes us feel better that we're not the only ones that are silently suffering. We're yeah. not the only ones that are trying to put on a smile when our home life is falling apart or when we, we don't feel like we're making enough money or when we, I mean, it's like, it's almost expected that you're going to hate your job and that's just part of life and suck it up. If you're not miserable at work, then you're not really, that. then you're not, you know, w- those of us who then pick jobs, we actually enjoy doing. People always think we're like weird or crazy. Like, what are you doing? You know, it's so true. Yeah. And yeah. So I think, I think it's just this cycle of people trying to make themselves feel better by watching other people's drama and, and bringing themselves into that. Like I'm not alone. Now when it comes to mourning the fact that all this stuff has been happening underneath our noses all this time, I do understand it. And I think that we all kind of went through that. Oh crap. Uh, yes. moment but there does come a time where you have to snap out of it because it's not going to do anybody any good with you sitting in the home in your corner of your uh, bedroom crying about it because you're not helping the situation and for me i know somebody sent me a, a recording a while ago from that famous i'll just say that famous restaurant um mm-hmm. near the capital of the united states so i'll say and it was a recording of a child and i can only listen to a couple seconds of it and i had to turn it down and i started crying yeah. and so i know for me I have to, I know what's going on, but I cannot focus on it because I cannot be productive at that time. I can't be a productive member of this community, of society, of my life in general. If I'm watching that and focusing on that, there are people, we know there are people that bless their hearts. God bless them. They have taken that assignment on to deal with that. That's not me. Uh, and I, God knew what he was doing. Cause I would not, I would already be in a psych ward right now if I had to, if I had to do that. So, so I think you're right. I think there, you have to then make that decision. You know, my, my mother used to say cowgirl up, cowgirl up, like you got to dust your knees off and go move forward instead of just wallowing in that grief. If that makes sense. I think that's such a perfect example that you've just given there because we've all got different skills and we've all got, you know, we do need people that have been going in and rescuing them and rehabilitating them. And and also we were talking, you know, about the amazing work that Shanti does on her channel um, in, in terms of giving these people a voice and everything. But it's a bit like if you have a rescue animal and habits are really easy to come by because sometimes through lack of time, we use certain words to try and get a message across certain way to perhaps excuse certain behaviors or explain certain things, because obviously trauma does affect every person that's experienced it. It affects every animal that's experienced it, it affects every plant that's experienced it. If you look at a, a, a plant that's been traumatized, you'll see that straight away. But equally, by, by keeping certain labels on it, 
you can keep things in that state as well. So, for example, I'm very passionate. I work with a lot of animals that are in their second, third, fourth homes, for example. And one of the things that I've really noticed is you can watch the reaction. If you sit there and you're talking about an animal and it's in your vicinity and you start talking about it being a rescue animal and you start talking about the traumas, you can physically see you take that animal right back there. And personally, that doesn't do it any good whatsoever. Having said that, it's, there's other circumstances where you do need to explain to people. So, for example, if you take two of my dogs, because they have had certain challenges in their past, they can react to certain situations in slightly um, in ways that some people wouldn't predict. So sometimes to keep them safe, I have to explain certain things to people to keep them from having their stress levels go up to an unacceptable level. So I think it's always a work in progress. And I think what the reason I brought it up today, because it's been interesting seeing sort of emails I've been getting and correspondence from people and also looking at how I've been feeling about certain things that might be triggering me when I'm listening to things, is I think moving forward trying to recognize when we're stepping into the drama yeah. if we don't need to. So yeah. sometimes you do need to step in and do things about things, but recognizing that we're very lucky, a bit like you said about, you know, if you've got new worried about pronouns, it's you're very privileged. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that a lot of us, if we've got a choice whether we step into certain drama or not, then we are in a very privileged situation and that I'd rather people spend their time on gratitude for realizing that it's a choice that they don't need to step into the drama all the time. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, it's so funny you say that because, as you know, um, I rescue dogs from India and my dog Ravi was not one of the ones that I personally rescued. Um, he, my friend actually rescued him and he had, he was rescued as a very small puppy. Um, we don't know what ha we are assuming his mother was put down because that's what they do. They'll go put down the mothers and let the puppies just fend for themselves until they pass away. And he was picked up by my friend and she raised him in his apartment. She saved him. But, um, I was, a couple of years ago, I was talking with a trainer because there are some behavior patterns that he has that are very common with um, animals who've had maybe have had a tra traumatic beginning. And we were, I was trying to work with her to figure out how we could get, he's a lot of, he's very, has a lot of anxiety. And, yeah. um, and she, the first thing she stopped me, she corrected me. She goes, I need you to stop saying he's a rescue. Yeah. And she goes, if people ask you where you got him, you just say, Oh, he was rescued, but he's not a rescue anymore. He has a home and he has a family. So drop that right there. He's not mm. a rescue. He's that's already happened. And then she said too, she said something interesting to me. She, cause I'm high anxiety. And she picked that up with me right away before I even told her that I, yeah, I have anxiety issues. She goes, you worrying about him is feeding that anxiety in him as well. You are making the situation worse for yeah. him. And she's right. Because every time I, 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 he's not alone that often. Cause I work from home, but every time I have to leave him, I stress out. Yeah. You know, I, I worry. And so that Lord have mercy if I ever have, have a human child too, because you know, what's that going to look like? But um, oh, I, don't worry. You're far more relaxed with the humans. Okay. Than you <laughs> I'm like, and you know, yeah. and so, and so it's, and it's interesting because even my sister you noticed it. My sister has multiple dogs and she's always had that he reacts differently because he is because of his childhood and it's, or, how he was born. I feel like he's, I think dogs are like always still your babies. They're always still like perpetual four-year-olds, but, um, but you know, it's just working with that, but yeah, it's, it's choosing how you address the situation. And that trainer really like got me thinking about how I work with him. But if you think about just that with your intimate relationship with your, your animal, how is that also affecting the greater world? You yeah. know, and, um, and, and that is, and that, and I said this on my channel before, that's why I like doing deep dives into weird topics because there's so much out of our control. This is something I can, I can do. I can look into stuff and bring it to the table for us to talk about and relearn because all that other stuff I can't control. We can't control when the plug is pulled, you know, yeah. we can simply be ourselves, not comply and do what we can do. Um, so, and I think just, and honestly like that, I know, I know that Gandhi is an interesting person in India. So I'm not saying he was a good guy. I know we were learning a lot about these historical figures, whether they were good or bad, but as far as the official narrative of Gandhi, that was what he was good at doing. He was able to, to stand up 
to the control that was happening in India at this time, but he never, he was never violent. Yeah. You know? and, and just, he did what he could do for us. That would be not complying, not, yeah. you know, someone knocks on your door to get to, you know, just laugh at him and shut the door. Yeah. What are they going to do? You exactly what they can do, and as I said, reason I do it's something that I have for, for me. It's always work in progress um, because I tend to talk really quickly most of the time, and I tend to um, uh, you know get carried away because I'm so enthusiastic about things. I get carried away. Sometimes I don't choose my words very carefully, and 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 the older and more experienced I get, the more I realise that actually it's really important to slow down. Think about what you're saying. Think about because these little shifts in different in science things can make a big difference. So, you know, a couple of years ago, I had a couple of friends um, that were really good fun, but they were real gossips, real gossips. And so yeah, it was quite funny. I mean, it was typical British sense of humor, but it was funny at normally at other people's expense. Yes. And I actually had to consciously remove myself from their. Um, company because what I found is when the three of us were all together it was really difficult to not fall into that behavior pattern yeah didn't have the skills necessarily to set all the uh the words to sort of say no let's not talk about let's this and now I'm much better at that but I had to go through a certain process of removing myself from the situation first learning new ways to express myself and redirect the conversation and then stepping back in. And that was fine because, of course, then what I realised is then I had to realise how much I had to take responsibility for that because when I then redirected the conversation elsewhere, they quite happily followed it. So yeah. we were all interacting and we're all responsible. It's certainly not, I'm not, certainly not saying it was them and not me. But I think this is what I'm noticing moving forward is um, it's very easy to get dragged back into, you know, having something sent you on your phone and watching it and it'd be like, oh, my God, look at this happening. Oh, my God, is this going to happen? So one of the things you and I are going to be doing this year is a new series together, isn't it? Hosting people talking about their passions and their skills. I'm so excited. Looking forward to it. I'm so looking forward to it. You know, it's so interesting too, when you, cause we were, you know, I was saying like misery loves company. That's why we like getting us drama. So we don't feel b so bad about ourselves, but in the opposite redirecting that whenever I hear somebody else talk about their passion, even if it's something I'm not passionate about, it, ex it inspires me, you know, yeah. to, to get back into what I love, you know? So I think that you talk about, you know, course correcting that energy, like what an incredible way to, to change that energy is to hear people talk about like what they, their, their zero point, what makes them like they thrive and um and it, it goes back to too i think it was you medina and me was were we talking about like you know the, the new financial system and how things are going to change and people don't know who they are because they've been forced to, to live lives that aren't necessarily what they came here to do and i was thinking a lot about that about you know going back to childhood and what did you like and i you know the funny thing is i was we all have things that we're passionate about even when you were a kid you had subjects in school that you really yeah. really loved you know even if that was pe or recess okay well what about pe and recess did you like was it the moving of your body was it feeling the blood pumping let's look at that you know i come from my my first name is my mother's maiden name that's a big thing to do down here in the south is to give your kid your maiden name and the bryces of south carolina are are big medical family like for generations the stadium at the university of south carolina is the williams bryce stadium big family my grandfather though was the first to leave and he moved to atlanta um and he was a surgeon and but i went to this small private school here in georgia and everybody knew who my family was I am terrible, terrible at math and science. Those were not my strongest subjects. I had to study really hard for them. And I remember sitting in a chemistry class in high school and asking the teacher all these questions. And he finally turned and looked at me and he goes, why are you asking me these, these questions? You're a Bryce, your whole family's done. You should. And I was like, I don't, this isn't my thing, but surprise, surprise, the subjects that I never had to study for that I excelled in were English and history. Yeah, I loved them. And look what I'm doing now. And so for people like get back to that. What what did you love as a kid? What what subjects in middle school and high school and college and university that actually you were excited to go to those classes and finding that passion again? Because I believe that God all God gives us purpose. You know, we all can't do the same thing. We all can't be surgeons. Completely. What would the point of that yeah. be? We have Absolutely. to have 
we have to have so many different people doing different things to make this world go round. Or does it go round? I don't know. We'll find, we'll find that out soon. <laughs> Next series. But this is why Bryce and I are so excited to be doing this new series because what we're going to be doing is going to be some people that you know very well that we're going to be inviting on to discuss with them and just talk about their passions, sharing them with them, how they got into it. Also, and, and also we are going to be giving you guys an opportunity to write in and come on and talk about your passions as well. Um, so um, please do under the link below, there'll be my email address. So if people have got things that they want to come on and talk to us about, please, please do write into us. And it, it might not be for sort of four to six weeks because we've got a few things lined up first, but I promise you we will get round to you because I, I just, I, even just now, just hearing you talk about it, I mean, when we were first coming up with this idea, guys. Oh, this is, your, this is all Catherine, guys. This is all Catherine. <laughs> she came up with this. Because so. of your enthusiasm and because of some of the people that we've been introduced to and these amazing different you completely diverse range of skills that people have got and it's absolutely brilliant and when you see people talk about things so some of my friends this weekend there's a lovely video on youtube i'll have to find it and and try and put the link and it's literally this lovely family that are living in the middle of nowhere and they're making like um homemade laundry detergent out of ivy wow. leaf which is my absolute passion because one of my passions is natural remedies and nature as you knew. So this is what I'm going to be talking about. And when I saw this and because a lot of my friends are on this group, because we're all animal and nature lovers, they've all gone out and made this and they're like, this is amazing. This is such fun. This is wonderful. The smells, the color, the, the fact that you've made it for free, that you're taking something that's sustainably available all year round and everything. And it's so it can it can be the littlest, simplest thing to something really, you know, way out and far out. But it doesn't matter because everyone's got those things that yeah. really, really excite them. For me, making my own lotions and potions and natural remedies, I absolutely love it. So I'm really hoping if anyone's interested that I'm going to do a little series on that. This I year. would love to watch that series because I am not that is not something I'm good at. But, I, you know, I have to tell you, Catherine, do you know how many people you've inspired to get into working with animals? Oh, well, I mean, what? hopefully quite a lot, because even when I got my Romanian um, dogs, now all my friends have got Romanian dogs. It's amazing. My mum's got a lovely one here. Um, all my friends have got them and everything. And it is really contagious. And mm -hmm. so I hope you're all excited, as excited about that as we are, because we're going to be sharing. We've got a few other good things up our sleeve, haven't we? But this is going to be one I think people are going to find really interesting because as adults, you know, I spoke about this the other day um, with you, Bryce and Medina, is that sometimes it's really difficult for people to think, what is my passion? Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that as you hear other people talking about things, it will reignite some sparks and you just to go out and try different things. I mean, I am hysterically not talented in art or music or anything like that. I mean, I am really not. But about a year ago, I went over to a friend's house and she got some art stuff out. Now, I haven't done any art since I was probably about 14 years old, you know, because when we were at school, you then had to choose between the arts and the sciences and you couldn't do both. So you at certain age, you give up one or the other. And I had such fun doing this painting. It was just such good fun. I loved it. So that's one of my things I'm going to try and make some more time for. I'm that's never awesome. going to be an artist, but um, it's really, really brilliant to sort of try out some of these things. So my, um, mother's, been, my mother's been buying adult coloring books. Oh, how lovely. She's in her 60s and she's yeah. been buying adult coloring books and she and it does it puts you in that little that that um that mindset of like getting yourself in that flow, that meditative yeah. state. Yeah, so you don't well I think that's the the thing about expectation too. It's like in order in order to do something, we 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 I think society is that we you know, what is it someone said like you eventually take over for the person that's, you know, mistreating you or telling you things eventually you take over that role and you start telling yes. it to yourself and so we i think we have this like thought that we have to be we have to be good at something in order to do it but who's whoever's you know that's not true i get that with yoga oh, people, you know, oh god sorry oh i was just gonna say when your children they're not afraid to try new things they're no. not 
they love doing the drawings and they don't sit there and think that wasn't very good they think it's wonderful and they had well they don't even care that it's not about how good it is they just really love the experience didn't they my niece almost every time I see my niece she's drawn me a picture my refrigerator is covered with pictures from her and they're typical child pictures I don't even know what half of this stuff the pictures are off. I just say, oh, thank you. But I love getting those because they're from her and she took that time to make it for me. And, you know, and, and you think about that, like the sincerity behind that. And as an adult, like just being able to sit down and who cares if no one can tell that's a person or a horse or a house, who cares? You know, it's, it's about finding that joy again and that spark of joy. And, um, and absolutely. And I do think, and I get that with people all the time will contact me be like, I want to start yoga, but I'm not flexible. And I'm just like, it's well, first of all, it's not about that. Second of all, like your flexibility changes. Who cares? I don't care. No teacher is going to care. They're just glad you're there, you know? So we have to take that level of expectation off. And I think too, you know, in our modern Western society, we have like jobs and boxes. Like you tick these boxes. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But people have found so many things to do with their life that don't fit in any boxes, but they're amazing. You know, and it's like we have to remove ourselves from the systematic thinking that the matrix has given us in order to find out what it is that our our soul wants to do. Because you can the whole point of, you know, one of the philosophies I've read in, uh, I think it was Alan Watts who said this, maybe if it wasn't Alan, Alan Watts, correct me in the comment section, that the whole people are like, what's the point of life? What's the point of life? The whole point of life is to be alive. Yeah. And, and to be alive, experience it, and I think to laugh as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because that's yeah. Uh, it's the highest form of spirituality. If you can laugh, then that is the highest form of spirituality. So, yeah, no, it is, it is so, so important. So, I can't wait. So, hopefully, we'll get, I will speak to you after this, and we should get our first one hopefully lined up for next week, I think. And um, let us know if you think that's a good idea. And as I said, we'll put our email addresses below the video and we're very hope ha um, happy to have suggestions from viewers that want to come on and participate in this series with us because I think that would just be absolutely wonderful um, to get people to share some of their joys, their passions, their talents and, and, and give some of the people some of that exposure as well to just talk about what really uplifts them and, and, and it makes such a difference, doesn't it? When you're around people that are really doing things, I mean, you and I, we've laughed about this loads of times, you know, this wasn't planned what we're doing now, but we love it so much because, um, it just feels like we're doing something really constructive, doesn't it? And what? Oh, always, yeah. Oh, we're so lucky that we've created something where we're not dependent on other people's rules and regulations. Well, we are a bit dependent on what we can say on this platform, but we can work within that. We're getting more creative with things like that. And luckily, we do have other platforms that we can divert other topics onto. Um so yeah, I think it's just going to be really good fun. And we had, I've had David um, Cowan, who I absolutely love, and he's really transformed so much over the last year, getting into really doing his music again, which is his real passion, and he'd let that drop for a while. And then I was speaking to Nick Alviar, that we'll definitely do one with, with his Good Lion TV, because he is a really perfect example of turning things around. And then um, Medina was, you know, with her poetry and her art and everything, and we all know, well, I'm not going to give it away with the ones that you're going to be talking about. So that will be one of the first ones. I know. I'm, so, I, I'm really honestly, I, and, and, and like attracts like. And so when you watch other people, that's why Alan Watts, um, his old, you can find a lot of his old lectures on YouTube. Oh, They're really so inspiring because it's about finding that, that, that essence of you that's, that's you. It's just, it's what God gave you. And I think when you hear other people talk about their journeys and their passions, even if the, the subject isn't what you're passionate about, it's going to motivate you to figure out what it is that you, that you really love and, and how to use that to help the world. I'm excited about all the new mus musicians that are going to be coming around because we know that music can be very healing. And, and we have people with good intention that have had to put that aside because of, you know, the world and paying bills, but they can pick that back up again and the art and, and the art therapy that, that people like Medina, I don't know if she does this, but, you know, people like her could probably do for people. And, and it is, it's just, it's just amazing. I'm so, I'm so glad you had this idea because I think it will be so inspiring and so uplifting. And you're right. I never, I thought 
you know, I worked so hard to become an authorized Ashtanga teacher. And I'm the only female in the state of Georgia authorized. It was a big deal. Um, I was assisting and working at AYA for a while, but then I went and opened up my own program where I was the boss and it was growing. And then all of a sudden we mm. had to shut down and that studio went under and God has a funny way. The universe has a funny way of taking something very like tragic and changing it to something positive. Because now I, if you had told me two years ago that I would be doing this, I would have laughed at you. No, I'm, I'm a Mysore teacher. I spent half of my life in India. Like that's my life now. But one of the most stressful times of our lives has turned into me one of the most incredible, amazing, happy times because of this, because of meeting you and meeting David Zublick and all the other people that I work with, Stephanie, Taylor, all these people that have come into my life now. It's because of this. And so when we're embarking on this new reality where we're going to have to find our passions again, don't be afraid because it's exciting. It's like you get to be a kid again. You know, yeah, exactly. And that is the best thing for, you know, your physical health, your emotional health. But also it's the kindest thing you can do for the planet because it really is contagious. And when you are just, you know, following your passions, everyone notices a change in you. Everyone. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. how many we're going to have to have new jewelry makers because we know yeah. all of our jewelry has been used with material that's not that great. So how many people like to make jewelry when you were a kid, like pick that up again? Who knows? Maybe you're going to be the next uh, designer jewelry maker, you know, like that's exciting. So and I hope Stephanie watches this because, um, yes, I mustn't give too much away, but there's. We might be talking about something to do with that next week. Who knows? So, yeah. So, Stephanie, I hope you're watching um, because, that, you know, this is the thing. When you're speaking to people um, who, you know, are, are creating things themselves, it's really wonderful when you see how much passion they put into the materials they're choosing, um, you know, the, the love and care that goes into creating something. One of my friends, Faye, she makes the most beautiful willow baskets from hand and it's just amazing what she does she's and she's such a busy lady because she runs her own animal rescue place as well for ponies Aww. so she's one of these people that you know how she finds the time to do something like this and she does and they're just absolutely beautiful so one of the things I'm going to do this this year when I get um a little bit more help at home with my animals is I'm hopefully going to be going around and visiting some of the people in the UK um, the people that I can showing off some of these talents that they're doing because it is such a good really idea. quite amazing. Well, we can do it. We can do it together. We could do our little road trips um, because we it's just amazing when you see what they do and also how these people do create the time to just do these beautiful things. You made me, you, when you said that, so my mom, again, my mom's family, the Bryce's, they're from the coast of South Carolina, the low country and the Gullah people um, in South Carolina, they make uh, these baskets. I have one in the other room. They're called sweet grass baskets. They use the oh, sweet grass. Boiling sweet grass, one of my favorite books. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Gullah people, so for a long time, they have their own like Geechee language. Uh, this is like Charleston, Savannah, the, the East Coast, low country. Um, these were p descendants of slaves and they still keep their own little Gullah language, Geechee language, and they'll sit on the side of the road and they'll, they'll make these baskets and they'll sell them on the side of the road. And apparently there's no book. They teach, they teach their youngsters by hand. These bas baskets are beautiful. I'll take a picture of mine and put it on my community tab so you guys can see it. They're beautiful. And a maybe like 10, 20 years ago, the state of South Carolina stepped in and forced them to start paying taxes. And so they, then you would see this person with them, like helping them. It, it became very, um, you know, of course, the government always screws everything up. Um, but I was like, oh my gosh, you're saying that I, I, I want to go and now back to Charleston and, and interview some of these uh, Gullah people that make these baskets and have them talk about like how they make these baskets and the passion and the love that they put into these yeah. homemade by hand. They're making them by hand baskets and, um, you know, should get to show off those traits because, because I want to see you do that. I so want to do that. Cause I'll my send one to you. Oh, when I go there, I'll get it. I'll send one to you. <laughs> Raging sweet grass first, because anything that's made by hand from natural, you know, sustainable natural products, it's just so special. You feel it every time you touch it, don't you? Yeah. Actually, we, you want to hold on for one second? I'll run to the next yes. room and I'll grab it. Hold on one second. Go on it. See everyone how exciting it is. It can just be something as simple as a basket, but um, you know, 
when you've got something like this, when you've got something like that in your home, um, the pleasure, every time you pick up that object, you get that pleasure, you get the feel, you get all the energy and the love that's gone into it. So it's so, so important. <gasps> oh, my goodness. This that's is all made by hand, guys. I cannot believe that. That is incredible. I was not expecting it to be so intricate. I mean, they're huge ones. You can buy, I mean, they all by hand. Oh, and that's the absolutely beautiful. And they, I mean, they said, if you guys, I mean, if you just Google, anybody watching who's never been to the low country, if you just Google, you know, Gullah Geechee, Sweetgrass Baskets, Charleston or Savannah, it'll show you pictures of, and they're literally sitting on the side of the road, just making these baskets by hand. And, and like I said, they teach their children. That's something that they've been, this is the, the Gullah are specifically um, kind of like the Creole of new Orleans. They were specifically uh, brought over with the slave trade, but they kept a bit of that culture from Africa. And now we, we have these beautiful, beautiful, this is my favorite. I mean, cause it was made by hand. I didn't buy this in, you know, pier one and not, no offense, pier one, but like, a, you know, it, it, there's no, there's nothing just, it, it's, it's, this is one, they're all one of a kind. It's all just absolutely out. amazing. Imagine how satisfied you'd be if you could create something not only as beautiful as that, but as useful as that. So yeah. this is what one of the things that we're really going to be really passionate about talking to is going to be all sorts of things, making things, skills, talents, interests, you know, as diverse. The, the people we've already got lined up are so diverse anyway. So I promise you there's going to be something for everyone in this. And um, we're really, really excited about it. So anything else? else you want to finish off with before we finish today? oh i'm i'm super excited i want to start now i, was there, I want to start going. now i literally could spend all day talking to people about I was it thinking yeah. about like people who are good cooks that know how to put together ingredients that's something i do not know i literally can't boil an egg don't laugh i literally cannot boil an egg i don't know how to do it i've had to ask my mother many times how does this work uh, so so people that know how to put different ingredients together because we know that our food is so corrupted now that we're going to need people to figure that out again for us and um yeah i'm so i'm just so excited i think it's just a brilliant idea catherine i cannot wait because i selfishly i can't wait to hear what other people have to say as well and to learn from them me too so we will get our schedules up. I'm looking at ways. What I'm going to be doing is getting my schedule um, of upcoming talks on um, my Telegram channels, which all the links are below. I'll start getting them on the website as of next week. Well, I've just got my website guys got to make a few tweets because they're things that technically I can't do myself. And also signing up to my newsletter because Andrea, who helps me with my newsletters, she's getting into a really good um, routine now saying, look this is what's coming because obviously not all of them are on youtube some of them we have to put on other platforms as well and then bryce you've got your patreon haven't you yes i do thank you and you i don't do you have a patreon Catherine? do you do patreon? i have a, it was one of the things i was going to speak to you about actually okay things i've got to get a bit more organized with i'm yeah. so grateful to my patrons they because you guys know that we we don't make i mean i know adam uh, Catherine and i both have ad sense but it's not like we're rolling in you know it's not like it's it's uh really making a huge impact on our on our monthly income so i'm so grateful to all my patrons my patreon page has been weird though i haven't been able to access the names and i'm wondering if something's going on with the platform right now but fingers crossed but yes yeah. patreon that's my, I'm just, I just have Patreon, YouTube and Rumble at, at this moment, but um, hopefully eventually I'll have a website, but I'm really bad at technology. So <laughs> about it. and also it takes so long, doesn't it? It does take so long. And also I set up my new website, the Catherine Edwards dot life. And then we were hosting the videos, but the trouble is the server space is so expensive when you've got all the videos on there and everything. It's a fine yeah. line to sort of balance. So, um, but Final messages from us for the thing. First of all, despite what might or might not be behind New Year, I hope. Oh, there's another fairy. I know the two. There's two. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, and so many animals here as well. Because my, if anyone wants to know where I get my love of animals from, it's my mum and my dad. My mum has got six dogs and a rescue parrot at the moment, and What's she that? feeds the foxes and everything. So, yes, it definitely runs in the family. But I just really, both Bryce and I, I mean, I'm not speaking for Bryce, but we just both want to thank you so, so much for the people that have supported us. And 
I know we say it, but we really do mean it. It's like having this platform to be able to interact with you all because we do go through and read the comments and it does mean a lot to us because everyone who watches this, who likes, who, who takes the time to make a comment, it, it's all the energy is coming in together and we're all supporting each other. Um, so we really, really, from the bottom of our hearts, want to thank you so, so much for the support the mainly kind comments, virtually all kind comments, the lovely suggestions. The other thing we're noticing a lot of, aren't we, Bryce, is people supporting each other mm -hmm. in the comments. It's really, really lovely and special energy and creating the future that we all want. So really, really happy new year to all of you. Absolutely. Even my mother said that once. She was like, you have really great people on your channel. You get really nice comments. And I have to say, yeah, it's because I think that's the community that we're in. Like Catherine and I, we're all in this. Yeah. And I consider the people that are subscribed to us as like, part, they're, you're part of this. You're part of the, these conversations. You're oh, part of this. Great. It's not just us who have our face on camera. You're part of this as well. And I do. I appreciate all the comments and all the opinions people leave because it, 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 you know, multiple heads are better than one. So completely. There's so many sort of real aha moments I've had when I've been reading people's mm -hmm. comments and things. And also, to really brings home all the different situations that everyone's in. And as I said, what I've really loved and really appreciated both on your channel and on mine is seeing how supportive of each other people are. And when someone's on there and having a difficult time, people really do go in and support them. And that just means so much, people. So thank you so, so much. Thank you, Bryce. I'm thank so you. excited. And um, we will get this schedule up and running and we will be doing our first one of sharing people's passions next week. I'm Take so care. excited. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.